Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka with Rural Heritage TV. The Shade Tree Tractor Club is a casual group of several dozen men and women who enjoy collecting and working on old tractors and using them in group events. One of those events was the annual tractor ride we filmed last year, and another is their annual Harvest Day, where they celebrate our agricultural heritage by using their antique tractors and field equipment in a local farm field. This is uh, Newburn, Tennessee in Dyer County. Okay, and this is somebody's farm? Yes, sir. Tom Davison owns the property. Um, they used to run cattle on this farm years ago. Okay. And right. um, when they started having this event, they um, used to rotate it between farms and different places. And Tom decided that they were just gonna have it here, have a, you know, a one spot and everything. and. This is where the event's held every year. How long has it been going on? For quite a while then. Yes, sir. It's been going on, I believe, since 2008 or 2009. Um, I started coming up here with my horses and around 2010, 2011, when I used to work with the extension service here in Dyer County. Okay. All right. So that's how I got to know everybody up here. Okay. There's a lot of antique tractors here. Yes, sir. Is this a lot of them from the Shade Tree Club? Yes, sir. A lot of them are from Shade Tree. Um, I think there's a few from Kentucky and a few from Mississippi that came up today and different parts of the state of Tennessee, but um, the majority of them here are from the local club here. They, they welcome anything antique related, horse drawn, mule drawn. Um, you know, we do the plowing. We have had some disking and things up here before. That phone number that's on the flyer is Miss Libby Davis. She's the secretary treasurer, um, and she can tell you more about the club than I can because she's one of the original founding members of the club. Okay, all right. And um, like I said, anytime anybody's wanting to have an event or anything like this, just let them know, and they'll help advertise and do what they can to do it. It's, it's a good group of people. You've seen our America's Rural Yesterday three-book set covering life on the farm in the early 1900s. We're excited to bring you a fourth edition to the series, Early Tractors, 
Featuring more than 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and lots more. Most of the photos are of new or almost new tractors back in the day showing exactly how they were configured when they came out of the factory. Tractor collectors, history buffs, and folks simply wanting to reminisce about farm life in America's rural yesterday will love to have this book. It sells for $24.95 plus shipping. If you buy more than one book in the series, the price per book goes down all the way to $69.95 for all four books. To order, call toll-free. 877 647 2452 or visit www.mishka.com. That's 1 877 647 2452. My name is Robbie Carmack. I'm the president of Travel West. We're a, we're a blacksmith group in uh, Brighton, Tennessee, and we have another club in McKenzie, Tennessee. Um, we, we teach uh, beginner classes, and, and you know, we have a monthly meeting where we get together and, you know, uh, discuss things that we've learned and processes and you know just bounce ideas off of each other. So um, how many members? We have about 20 members in total in Brighton about 10 show up each month and then McKenzie probably has probably 50 probably 30, 30 okay. to 50 and they probably have about 10 or 15 that show up monthly. Um, is it's, it mostly ornamental blacksmithing or? We do, uh, I do only ornamental blacksmithing. We have some bladesmiths in the group. Uh, we teach ornamental and then you can you can take the ornamental and turn it into into, into knife making or bladesmithing as you refer to it. Uh, some people just have no interest in, in bladesmithing and some people do and there's, there's, you know, there's no reason to do you know, one or the other. If it's, that's what you like to do, that's what you do. And of course, it's kind of a stupid question, isn't it? Ornamental blacksmithing. Because even if you're making like a pot rack, you're going to make it look nice. Yeah. So it's ornamental, but it's still functional. Yes. Yeah. Just because it's ornamental doesn't mean it's not functional. Right, right. I mean, even yeah. when you're making your tools, your tongs and your whatever. Yeah, they're still you're, functional. But you're you're making them so that there's something that you're proud to look at, too. Sometimes. Okay. If it's If it's a one-time tool, you don't care what it looks like as long as it gets the job done. But if it's something you're gonna, you know, use in the shop for, you know, and sometimes you make an ugly tool and that's your favorite tool, so. Sure, sure. But yeah, you, you try to you try to strive to do your best work, all the time. Um, how long have you been doing it? I've been doing it about six years in total. Okay. And I've been with the club probably three years, yeah. and and I've 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 grown tremendously since I joined the club. When you're by yourself, you know, watching YouTube, you you. You don't know when you're screwing up. You don't know how to fix it. When you get with the guys and you know you get together, we have hammer ends at, at my house once once a month. Try to, and you know we'll all get together. We'll you know if you're having a problem making something, we'll we'll, we'll work through the issues. And, and you know everybody's making it by the end of the class. You know in the end of the hammer end. It's it's good to have people that enjoy your interests that do the same interest with you to to, to grow in your hobby. That's sharing all it, information, yeah. sharing yeah. techniques. That's all it is, is a hobby, but yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times there's a couple of ways to do something, like. Yeah, there's there's five different ways to right. doing it, and, and and five different people enjoy it different ways, but you know, you can pick up bits and pieces off of, you know, I, I make a hook totally different than Doug makes a hook, but when we get done, we're, it's, it looks the same. How important is it to get out in the public like this? I mean, you're, you're selling uh, pieces, but I'm guessing you're mostly... It's mainly to get our name out and, and to, to let people... N nobody know. like, I, this club was, was five minutes from my house, and I, I never knew it. Facebook, I, I found it on Facebook one day. Uh, and it's, 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 you got to get the name out to get you more members, because there's plenty of people that want to do it. They just, they, they have no avenue to start. And the, it's uh, important to get more people doing it. Yes. And it's important to find a club because the club's going to have tools that you don't have access to, and and, and tools more tools make stuff easier. But you you can do it with just the bare minimums. But you know you you come use a tool and you, you you learn you like it and you make your own tool. That's what blacksmithing is. You you need a tool, you make a tool. So. Where do you get your coal from? We get our coal out of Kentucky. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know any more than that. We okay. buy it from McKinsey. Uh, the guy up there goes and gets, you know, trailer loads of it and for sells us. Yeah, for and the then, club and, and sells us bags of it. Sure. Okay. We, I don't have a bag out here, but we get just a um, it's about 50. It's about 50, but 
Um, do most of you use coal forges? I see you got a gas forge here as well. Is it I, half and half? Or? I do not like coal. Sure. Uh, coal. Coal's fine. I don't have anything against it. But like I've been 30 minutes trying to get a good fire to, 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 to heat up some uh, some metal here, and I, I'm not the best fire maker. But propane, you, you you hit a switch or you light a you know light a match and you you're going. And then my favorite is induction. I, I use an electric forge okay. at my house. Right. Uh, within Within 30 seconds of walking into my shop, I can flip two switches and step on a pedal, and I got metal glowing orange. Coal forges are superior for, for forge welding. Uh, one of the things that's nice about um, a gas forge is you can put a piece of iron in there and it just stays at that temperature. Yes. yes. As opposed to over here, you got to be... I can melt it. Or Easy. you can cool down on it, you got to keep it going. Yeah. It's, it can go up or down depending on without... I mean, I know horseshoers that really like gas forges because they can oh, just yeah. walk away from yes. it and then come back to it. Well, that's demonstrating. When people walk up, start asking questions, I can turn loose of it, leave it alone, don't worry about it, it's not going to melt. <coughs> oh, on the coal forge, I've got, when somebody walks up to talk, you better pull your steel out. Right. Um, I use propane primarily at home. I do have, well, I, I have several coal forges. And what I do is, coal is really good for spot heating when you only need to heat up a piece of it that big or that long, you can spot heat or forge weld it. And what I'll do is I'll set things aside until I get a good evening's work built up fire up the coal forge and I'll do all my forge welding and spot heating at one time. Sure, okay. What kind of stuff do you make? I make ornamental stuff. I make... Uh, so like S-hooks and... S-hooks, campfire cookers, uh, drawer pulls, um, coat racks. Um, it, 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 and it, some custom stuff probably. Yeah, the, the, the drawer pulls. Or something. They might need you to make a hinge or something. Yeah, like I've made, I can, I've made hinges for gates. Um, you know, just any, anything you can imagine, I, I, I can make. As long as I got a little sketch and, and, and you know, just you tell me kind of what you want. I've done a lot of custom work like that. Yeah. The, um, the blacksmith back in the day, um, like today, I guess, a welding shop, um, used to get called on to do almost anything. <laughs> yes. If uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that, what kinds of things might a blacksmith have been doing back in the day, say 100, 150 years he ago? He would have been making railing, he would have been making cooking utensils, um, hinges, <coughs> sewing needles, sewing shears, she scissors, yeah, um, make all the carpenter's tools, yes, he made all the hammers, the chisels. Never stone. Been. He made all the stonemasons' tools. Yes. He was. He fixing, was fixing stuff. Yeah, fixing it, anything that, that people broke. You had you, the blacksmith is the one that fixed it. There was an old saying I heard one time that said you could have a blacksmith without a king, but you could not have a king without a blacksmith because he's the one that kept everything fixed. We we like I told you we we teach a class. We teach a four part class. It's called Green Coal. It's around a hundred dollars for everything for the four part classes. You'll make, you learn how to make a hook, a paper towel holder, and then you'll learn the, the, the forbidden forge weld and you'll make a fire poker. And with, with those four classes, three projects, you, you, you'll have all the basics. Will to, you learn to how to set up a shop? Of your own? Well, you, you can, can kind of look at it, the shop you're you in. Can, yeah, you can look at the shop. Yeah. And I, visit with the guy that yeah. set it up. I, just, I look at every shop I walk into. Of course. To see if I, there's some way that I can improve mine. Yeah. My shop changes about twice a year. Yeah. Every time I get a new Can't piece of equipment. Can't find nothing in your shop. <laughs> every time I get a new piece of equipment, I have to rearrange everything. Tools, if I don't make it, I try to primarily buy it from uh, Dave Custer who is Fiery Furnace Forge. You can find him on eBay. He has a storefront on eBay. All of his prices include free shipping. He's got reasonable prices, he's got great tools, and he's a, he's a great guy. Uh, he's a, we, we have conferences all over the, 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 the country, and he goes to a lot of them. So if they can make he'll it out be, to He'll be set up selling there, and if he doesn't have it with him, yeah. tell him what you want, he'll send it to you. Okay.
All right. Um, he and I both use C Custer tools. Yeah. There's a few other tool makers, but he he has the most variety, most reliable, I would say, the easiest yeah. to get a hold of and deal with. Oh yeah, he's very easy to get a hold of. Yeah. Two very different mules here. Yes, sir. They, one is a lot more alert than the other one, isn't it? Yes, sir. Are they related? No. Okay. Uh -uh. When did you you got them? You, you got them separately then, and you just put them together? No, I got them together about eight years ago. Okay. All right. And I've had them together ever since. The one on the left sure keeps his head up high. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's a horse mule, nothing than a bear mule. So that one's a horse mule, and you say the other one is a mare mule. A mare mule. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yes, sir. What do you I do with them? I garden with them, and I wagon ride a lot. Uh, I wagon ride probably two times a week or something like that. So around your area, you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we ride off for a week or so, but. On an organized train or wagon no, train or no, just yourself? Just, just a couple of us. Sure, yeah, yeah. You get to see the country that way. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. it um, it teaches your mules to stand when they walk that much. Yes, sir. It sure does. Yeah, yeah. You work mules most of your life? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Grow up with it? Yes, sir. We used to farm with them when I was a kid. We didn't have a tractor or anything like that. Are these Percheron mules? No, I, I don't know. They yeah. just, they just, they just happen to be black. Right, right. I, I don't know where they come from. Right, right. They work pretty good for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This ground is kind of soft, ain't it? Yeah, well, it's, dusty. it's got a hard pan underneath. underneath. Yeah, yeah you, you can't get through that hard pan. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tractor packs it, it down. Yeah, if you did, well, you couldn't pull it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a pretty day, isn't it? It sure is. Yeah. Maybe we'll have several more. Hope yeah. so. I hope so. Well, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Thank you. You have a good day. And you too, thank you. Come on. Good morning, how are you? <laughs> Any excuse to quit? We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life a hundred years ago. 
field work has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting, and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo, or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle, and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon, and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down, all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www. Dot ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. So tell me your name. My name is Rebecca King. And the name of your company? Is Black Widow Horsefly Catcher. Okay, and you do this with your husband? or? Yes, my husband and I, our daughter helps out occasionally. Yes, okay. she's the IT department. All right, okay. And what is the product that you're selling? It is a horsefly catcher. It catches all different kinds of horseflies. There's biting stable flies, and four different kinds of horse flies here in our area. And um, it's, it, it catches other things too, like a wasp or a moth or something like that. And in the summertime, when the Japanese beetles come out, sometimes it catches more of them than it does horse flies. Okay, and there's a lot of them. Oh, there is a lot of them. During certain days anyway. Yes, it's a, there's a little two week period that I'll go out and I'll find that, yeah. So I'm a horse fly, what am I doing? Well, you circle your prey. So you come around, even though the barrel's there, you see this black plastic, this shiny black plastic, that's what's drawing her in. And she circles her prey, and then she hits that, and she was propelled down to the water due to the angle of the shield. Okay, all right, it's that simple. It's that and then, simple. And then when she hits the soapy water, she can't get out. She can't get out. Even if there's other horse flies around her, if she gets wet on her wings, she's done. Yeah, okay, all right, and the soap makes it stick. Yes. Yes, the, the dawn is it's thicker, and once she gets it coated on her wings, because she was born in water, she can walk out of water. But with the dawn on her wings, that's the, this attracts her, this catches her, and dawn kills her. Okay, all right. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.